In the 1600s, chemistry took place of the myths and superstitions of alchemy, and scientists began to approach phenomena using only scientific methods. A man named Robert Boyle was a wealthy Englishman whose work was very influential in this process. His book, The Skeptical Chemist, was published in 1661, and it pointed out almost all the errors associated with alchemy. But one myth he still believed was that gold could be made from other elements. In order to try out his alchemy experiments, Boyle needed the British Parliament to repeal the ban on alchemy, and in 1689, he succeeded in doing so. This got technology advancement going again, and Boyle tried for many years to turn lead into gold. He never succeeded, but Boyle tried many other experiments with air, metal, and water to learn about science. One of Boyle's greatest achievements was helping to discover the element hydrogen, number one on the periodic table. Boyle discovered hydrogen by putting a little bit of iron into an acid and saw that it began to bubble. Not knowing what would happen, Boyle tried to light the bubbles on fire, and the resulting explosion was bigger than any other explosion he had ever seen before from just a few bubbles. These bubbles were made of pure hydrogen, the lightest, cheapest, most common gas in the universe but also the most explosive. Hydrogen is so light that shortly after Boyle discovered it, people began to inflate giant airships with it, and a new form of flight transportation was born. This new fad was continued until 1937, when the Hindenburg, the largest aircraft of all time, exploded in a giant burst of flames. Today, we use helium for most of our balloons, and although it is more expensive, it's much safer than hydrogen could ever be. While Boyle worked on topics mainly of matter, other scientists worked on topics of energy. In 1724, Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit invented the world's first thermometer. Fahrenheit was a glass blower that put a bit of mercury in a sealed tube, knowing that it would expand when warm and shrink when cool. He could tell the temperature of things with it by judging how high or low the mercury was in the tube. But in order to be more accurate, he wanted to make quantitative values for the points on the tube, so he decided to mark the 100 value at the ideal human body temperature, and the 0 value at the coldest temperature he could get a saturated salt solution before it froze. However, on the day he decided to make the measurement, his test subject had a fever, so the point he marked as 100 was a little bit too high, and that's why our real body temperature is a little bit lower, at 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. In 1742, Anders Celsius developed a simpler scale based on the boiling point and freezing point of water, and Celsius is now the unit of choice for all scientists. What would you do with all this new information about matter and energy? How would you experiment with an unknown substance, or calibrate a device to logically describe what you observe? Think about it.